Hey, this is Old Time Radio, and uh, excuse the bubbly, garbly mic on my laptop. Um, I wanted to give you a quick demonstration of how much uh, work Neverwinter has to do, or your graphics card has to do, to draw a single frame uh, on the screen when you're dealing with uh, tile sets, um, and uh, frankly, a lot of other things that Neverwinter Nights um, displays. So you can see the grid pattern here, um, and that's a nice reminder that everything is chopped up into tiles on this. Um, it's that Looking at newer tile sets, sometimes when you're rotating around or when you're playing through them, you'll definitely get a vibe like something's getting loaded down. It's not necessarily um, because Neverwinter is an old game. It's because of the way that the content, custom content is made, or even in this case, default content, um, it's not made very efficiently. And so let me go ahead and show you that. Um, let's take a look here. Okay, we've just stopped the scene, and I'm going to advance it uh, on the, the GL debugger. Uh, you just hold down Shift and tap F11 to move it forward. What's going to happen, we're going to see a blank screen pretty soon. If I'm lucky. There we go. Black screen. Okay, so that's this is kind of our uh, draw call zero. The scene is completely blank. So now watch what happens as I advance by hitting the F11 key. Each time I hit it, another one of these little packets of visual information are being added to the scene. And as you'll notice, there are a lot of them because everything's been sliced up into 10 meter chunks and because each one of those chunks um, can contain lots of meshes with lots of different textures, it generates a lot of draw calls. Um, a draw call is generated when you have a mesh and a texture. Um, if you change the texture on the mesh, then it generates a new draw call. If you change the mesh and use the same texture, it also generates a new draw call. Um, you can get around this by collapsing meshes in, that might use the same texture into one mesh, or you can use a texture atlas to combine various textures that are used for a model into one um, texture. Um, and you kind of have to fiddle around with that a little bit, but it's it's not too difficult. And the point is, is that each time you saw a little step, it was doing um, a draw call. You can dramatically reduce the number of draw calls um, uh, with those with those two two methods. So notice the boat here. Check out how many draw calls it's going to take to draw this. So we have at least one that just kind of kind of at the bottom of the frame, and then another, and then another. You see how each of those are being added? Most of that boat could probably be done in one single draw call, especially with the texture atlas. Now, it's going to start drawing the sails, and we might not be able to make that more efficient because those guys use dangly, and I'm not I'm not really sure if um, if that's going to uh, if, if that has an impact on it. That'll have to, have to be something either I or somebody else will have to look at. But I'm just going to kind of go through here, and each time you hear a tap on my keyboard. It's me going through another complete um, OpenGL draw call. And as you can see, for every little bit of geometry that's got a texture, um, it's, uh, it's, it's using up its own draw call, no matter how small an object it is or how large an object it is. Now, Sometimes you won't be able to see anything at all being drawn, and that's because 
Neverwinter doesn't do a very good job sometimes of um, determining what's within our field of view or not. And in my experience, anyway, with tile sets, mostly, um, that can actually eat up a lot of overhead, stuff that you're not even seeing, stuff that's behind um, those uh, tiles. So you can see the water is starting to come in now. There's some moss on the rocks. We probably are going to start seeing some graph, grass tufts come in here. Um, no matter how tiny a mesh it is, um, if it's if it needs to switch to another texture for something, um, unfortunately, it's going to use up a, a whole new draw call. Now, Castle Rural Exterior is notorious for just seeming kind of laggy. And uh, again, if I haven't mentioned it uh, earlier in this video, it's not because Neverwinter's old. It's not. It's because there's so many freaking draw calls that have to go on for this. Um, it, it literally bogs down your graphics card. Neverwinter is not really efficient at how it passes this information to your card. And unfortunately, it has to pass a lot of information to your card again and again and again, as opposed to passing it to your video card and then saying, here, you manipulate it. Unfortunately, we don't really have the luxury of an engine that is new enough um, to do that. And by new, I mean something made in probably 2003 or 2004. Knights of the Old Republic, interestingly, um, got a, an engine improvement because it was based on the Aurora engine. And um, that was supposed to help with this sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure if it did based on the number of people complaining, but theoretically, Bioware figured that out at some point. I don't know if you can check this out, but these grass, grass tufts up here, and I think there'll be some down here. Um, they're just eating up a huge number of draw calls. Every little tuft of grass that's a separate mesh gets its own call. There's no way to really consolidate these, again, without doing texture atlases or by doing contigu contiguous groups. So, like, say, a 3x3 three three group that was all one mesh and whose texture was a texture atlas. So then in that case, you could do, you know, almost, I guess I can't say infinite, but really large areas in just a fraction of the horsepower that it requires to put something like this together. Again, maybe you guys don't use a debugger like this, but I guarantee you when you're rotating around your map, especially in tool center and game, you're going to notice that things kind of just don't seem as fluid, and this is why. Again, it's not a function of how old Neverwinter Nights is. The engine is blazing fast. It was meant to be efficient. Um, it's just custom content like this. And again, it's not really the, all entirely the custom content's fault. It's also this whole tile-based scheme. Maybe there are ways that we can get around that. Of course, you're going to have to sacrifice some of the variability, but still. <laughs> yeah, I hope you can hear me tapping on this keyboard. Okay, we see some of the grass coming in. And then when we see our grid lines, when they appear permanently, then one frame will have been completed. There you go. All of that work for a single frame, uh, of which there are 20 or 24 or 30 a second. And um, it would be cool if we could kind of bang our heads together and come up with ways to reduce that because um, graphics cards love high poly models. They do. I've put a lot in here. You've seen them if you've seen my videos. Uh, but what they don't love is a crap load 
of these draw calls, it will bog things down. It'll make them seem syrupy. So anyway, hey, thanks for your time. And uh, yeah.